I'm Jazz. Uh, we weren't. We, we Go. were. You you dropped the ball there, Jen. I'm Jen. <laughs> I'm Dave. We rolled the same again. I, I just, and Rob, you didn't well, honour we, the we, tradition. We rolled an eight. I didn't think we'd be the highest, and we were. We were. Yeah, I, I dropped the ball. You Is that did. the second week in a row that Rob has dropped the ball? <gasps> yes. Okay. You, you also <laughs> yeah. Did I drop it last week? No, no. Last week we had a break. I had to introduce you. Someone had to introduce This is, how, this is yeah. No, the no, riveting no. opening of every episode is... Did Rob and Joss roll the same again? Sorry, yeah. Jazza. I broke character. Oh, What's no. going on? I hate it when I do that. And I always <laughs> correct myself. And I, I just, it's okay. I'm... You are suffering from a brain injury, so... <laughs> yes, Rob bonced himself on the head coming into the room. That's true. That is true. It's fine. <sighs> okay. That is true. In the previous episode... <laughs> If I inspire <laughs> jazz a plug to World Anvil. I didn't. But you will I didn't, but I, So I'm going to make up for that. Woo! By thanking our sponsor, World Anvil. Yay. Honestly, it's such a huge honour to be sponsored by World Anvil, who not only make this season supported and possible, but also make your roleplay sessions supported and possible. Uh, from the pl- perspective of both players and world building it's just really fun. But even as fans, like there's public pages for Iron Spy. You can go check it out. Go to tabletoptime.com slash Sunder and you can see our public page. Wait, I've got to show you the cool public page. There it is. Pretty. Cool timelines and all this stuff. Now, I have said this before, but I will say it again. The maps are 100% my favourite feature. But I'm going to bring this up again because you've seen these maps that I've shown you here on the world as they are. But there's another one. And the cool thing is you can interconnect them. So if you build a new map... Uh, let me show you. I can click on the world map and I can navigate. This has got all markers that I put down and whatnot. Click on Graydale to go in there. We can see Graydale as, la- as I've laid it out. And I can create new layers. So you can see I can show my settlements and it shows some of the smaller towns that are maybe less important, but we can see that they pass through Springdale on their way to uh, Geldervale. And I made Geldervale. Now, I couldn't show it last time I plugged World Anvil because they hadn't gotten there yet and I didn't want to give too much away. But now I can. So you click on here and this is the World Anvil map for Geldervale. Now, they actually have so many resources in the back end that uh, they basically show you here are places you can go to get free maps made or cool subscription services that help you make premium maps. Um, And then you use World Anvil to create all these different awesome markers and interactivity like I just showed you. And one thing I didn't actually uh, show you yet, I sort of described it as we role played, but there's a district slayer. Mm that I created, which is really fun. So you guys came in here through the West Wall Gate. You're probably sort of here in this area, just the city proper, but off over here into the slums. Um, But you pass through here, you pass the public executions area through and around the theatre district and around the the military district all the way into the uh, great and noble houses. So it's just a really fun way to visualise for yourself and for your players. Like it helped me flesh out the city and like really come up with like a look at all the different farmlands on the outside, which obviously I know mm. are like a different arenas and the way they train their, their um, famous horses and all this stuff. It's just really fun. It's really fun to build your worlds with World Anvil and it's fun to play with the worlds built in World Anvil and you can do that with a huge discount, 40% off of all yearly subscriptions. Uh, go to worldanvil.com slash Ironspire. And you can get 40% off of all the yearly subscriptions. Yay. And a huge thank you to uh, World Anvil for sponsoring our uh, our season and podcast. Thank yeah. you. So, <clears throat> speaking of the recaps, I'm going to start over in this direction. Let's start with Delvin, this chapter. Is that my animal magnetism you're drawn towards? It is. All right. Well, last session, I had a my, really my name's, shit time. My name's Dave and I'm playing Delvin. Oh! Yeah. Oh, Oh, I'm Dave, and you should have gotten that by now. And I'm playing Delvin, who is a... Did you do it the other way around? Oh, we're doing... We're adding yeah. a thing! Mm. And I'm playing Delvin. Yeah. Delvin is a barrowin. Technically, I think we're supposed to do it in the intros. We should, but we'll cover it here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I'm, I'm playing a, a barrowin uh, from the north, who is a trader and merchant, who maybe has revealed himself to be... A little bit less than honest in some of his dealings, and that might be why his success is that he kind of uh, spins the deals to work in his favour a little <laughs> bit more than perhaps he would otherwise. Um, and yes, we recently went into the city of Galdavale on the assumption that our deal was going to be, well, honoured to bring Medela in, and uh, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. <gasps> and why wasn't it? <clears throat> 
because a very handsome man had a proposal to make that you simply couldn't refuse. <laughs> For some reason, he killed my friend. He, then he threatened your mother. He threatened my mother. Yeah. He threatened Kat's mother. Yeah, he did. And he also, for some reason, threatened Brick's ward, despite the f- fact that he owns Brick now. It was ca- kind of confusing. <laughs> I do not like this man. You never know who you can trust, mm. even if they are, are a bre- bred to be controlled. <laughs> <laughs> even if they're a Brick. <laughs> All right. I've um, always trusted me, Brick. <laughs> Delvin pulls now a from, crumbled from piece Catalina's, of masonry from his pocket. From Catalina's perspective. Hmm. So my name is Jennifer and I'm playing Catalina, who is a strong and confident Thanissian woman um, who has kind of found herself in a bit of a predicament as well with um, her fellow adventurers. She just, just learnt that her father, who she thought was dead, uh, may be very well alive. Um, and if she fulfills uh, one of three of Ainsley's three demands, there is a possibility she will see him again. What are those three demands? One is an item of interest, a Felmore scepter. Mm -hmm. A second is the mother assassinated, which is Melba. Is that correct? No, Melba works for the mother. That's it. Yep, 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 yep. So you don't know the mother yet. And the third was the source of Catalina's power and the trade that Delvin made, which Catalina doesn't know much about. Okay. You'll have to ask me. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now, Brick, <coughs> you've gone through a multitude of different changes and in one evening, actually, experienced the most emotional mo- moment in your life in one way and perhaps a very emotional moment in another way. Take us through your experience in Fountains. I'm- Brick played by... I am Rob. Big gay. <laughs> and I play Brick. Brick is a uh, big, burly, failing call uh, bodyguard. And I was tasked with uh, bringing a small girl to this town. And we got there and we were betrayed by previously mentioned creepy man. Which is really about good because I fond- formed a bond with this person, this little girl, even though she was my owner. And then that was, uh, you know, brutally taken away from me. And... At threat to her life, I now have to serve this arsehole. Mm. So my character's last name is now Inner Turmoil. (laughs) I thought it was Mortar. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. It's a reference for Oh, that was your fiancé. Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, no, Eggs and Bacon's the horse, isn't it? Eggs and Bacon's the horse. Bricks and Mortar is... If we get another (laughs) failing call, I'm not calling them Mortar. (laughs) I love it. Okay, so... Where we left off, you guys ended up in uh, a, a dodgy inn, mm. uh, staying in the night, and there was a bit of a standoff between Brick and Delvin. But y- yes, Catalina. No, sorry, continue, because you're probably going to say what I was going to say. What was it? Oh. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I want the damn narrator <laughs> introduction. Sorry. Get I'm me Jazza and I am the narrator. So Were you going to Draw reference in. the visitor? Yes, no, yes, okay. I was. So when the players uh, subsequently left, and the reason they left and stayed at a dodgy inn uh, as opposed to their very, very lavish uh, place was because they came to the conclusion that this person uh, probably has some sort of way of spying on them or controlling them or trapping them in other ways, so they didn't stay at the accommodation provided to them. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so they found the dodgiest, most unlikely place that someone like that would be near. Uh, but it turns out there were some eyes watching for them that weren't necessarily uh, Ainsley's because uh, they ended up going to find someone who was looking for them, who is Pemble, who was previously uh, Edgar's uh, assistant. And now no longer has Edgar to look after. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. So he showed up uh, late in the night and uh, discussed briefly with Delvin... Brick would have overheard it and Catalina was asleep, uh, that uh, Edgar had discovered the location of Catalina's father. So we learnt last chapter that Catalina's father is alive, um, but um, Pemble has told Delvin that they know where. <coughs> Catalina doesn't know, which is very interesting. <laughs> Fast asleep. That's it. So where we pick up, I'm going to say, uh, despite the fact that I know that Delvin and Brick would have a standoff and an eye staring contest all night long, (laughs) I'm just going to say you guys fall asleep. You have beautiful eyes, Delvin. 
Oh, so everyone, you say that in the middle. Of, so it's Pample's. No, who was he was it? sleep talking. No, no, you <laughs> see, Pample left. Pample left. Pample left. And you at some point say, "I'm full of what? Do you want to have no, this? No, no, no. you don't want to have this moment. No, you don't. All right. You don't right now because actually, Brick <laughs> is standing near a stream. Uh, Brick, you're sort of in a thicket, a bush, a bush thicket on the edge of a of a river. And you can hear some distance of laughing, cackling. It's the sun is low in the sky. Do you want to investigate? I do. I'll approach the cackling. You head in that direction. <clears throat> and the sight you see in front of you gives you an intense sensation of deja vu. You see the silhouette of a very large man standing in the river holding an axe and standing very still. And around him are prancing children. Um, one seems to climb on him, on him at one point. There's a, a very baggy-clothed lad on the riverbed sort of pretending to fall over and making the children laugh. Uh, and then there's a little girl standing by the river with dark skin, standing near Rick, looking tentatively. This is sort of off in the distance. And then it's clear what this scene is that mm. you're viewing yeah it's a familiar one that you actually had revisited uh this evening in your memory when you closed your eyes and and had that feeling touched on by catalina yeah and she corrupted it <laughs> is there any taint like from from her corruption of my good memory there is nothing but this moment good. this moment feels real mm. in fact Everything that you've experienced in the days after this moment haven't happened in your mind. They, they never happened. Mm. You know on a conscious level things that have happened. You know on a conscious level what has happened, but you feel like they haven't. It's very peaceful. And in fact, as you look on in this scene, at this stage from a distance, unless you choose to get closer, you feel those feelings of pride swell in your heart. Mm -hmm. your feelings because you can see Medela start to interact with these children and um, opening up. I wonder, says a voice from behind you, if it will always be like this in our memories. Do you think as the world and our lives get sadder or more lonely or we are torn apart that we lose the things that we once loved and were pure? Are they lost and forgotten? Am I cogn cognizant of the fact that this is a dream? Or what I assume is a dream? Roll a perception check. <clears throat> I'm going to say challenge level four. Let's be honest, like when, when you're dreaming. Yeah. No. You know. One, two, three. You are not cognizant of this being a dream. Unless you want to spend it. You can if you want to. I'm just curious if I should play shock to the fact that she's there next to me when she's also in front of me. Do you turn to see her? Yeah. She looks up at you. What is this? She reaches up and holds with, your, with her tiny hand. She grasps onto your very large hand. She says, a wonderful moment. And she looks back. It was... It was the best memory that I have ever had. But as she looks back and as you look back with her, look up from her, there's no one in the river. They're no longer there. It's just you and Medela alone standing beside the river from a distance. I'm sorry. I have failed you and your family again. What do you mean again? She looks up confused. I was absent the night of the fire. You were all that was left of them. And Rick, I was absent the night of the fire too. 
I feel like I have failed, but perhaps if we are failures together, do two wrongs make a right? I do not want to fail you. I am here to protect you, and I have not done that. Then don't. The early morning sounds from the outside window slowly stare you. As the hustle and bustle of the outside town wakes you all up, I'm going to say you're all, I'm going to assume you all want to wake up quite early. Uh, what's going through people's head? How did you all sleep? Uh, and also, Delvin and Catalina have rituals you might... I'm going to say... this stage, you, it this yeah, time. You don't get to roll because you're in a dive that yeah. you cannot feel comfortable in. Mm. Um, and Catalina, you're in an awkward position, but you both separately and without particularly knowing from each other feel quite a yearning for quite an emptiness. Mm. Um, how much money do you have left, by the way, Catalina? Two. Two, okay. Mm. So you don't necessarily feel empty, but you do feel sort of lost without this replenishing ritual. Ah, oh, good morning. Are you still asleep? No. That one just opens his eyes and looks up at the ceiling. Does Brick wake up or say anything? Uh, I wake up and start doing some stretches, limber up a bit. I'm going to make a destiny roll to see how much of that dream uh, Brick remembers. Three. <sighs> Three. I'm going to say Brick wakes up with a lingering feeling like he's been in a familiar place, just a dream, mm -hmm. nothing more. Um, except the memory, a, s a single word, don't, knowing what it's talking about. Don't fail me. Yeah. You don't know what context it came from, where where it was, but you know that was Medela saying that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, um... I suppose if you guys uh, don't mind, I'll uh, get ready for the day. <laughs> Aye, we should go. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we should go. Delvin stands up. He didn't change. He's just fully dressed from the night before. In um, fact, he probably gets up from like the corner of the room slumped against the wall, not in a bed, just had passed out staring at brick across the room mm. with an uncomfortable crook in his back. Mm. And Catalina decides that for once, knowing that there is the potential her father is alive, she's not going to play today for the first time probably ever. How does she, that feel? She feels incredibly guilty. The fact that he's alive this entire time and she hasn't, you know, but a, but a bit portrayed too, like the fact that he hasn't been able to contact her or she didn't know like who yeah. who did this and why and why hasn't anyone told her. Um, so she's kind of dealing with that moral dilemma and then everything else that's happening as well. So for the first time ever, she's just really not feeling it. She kind of just wants to, just to go, yeah. get settled. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. Delvin stands up, steadying himself against the wall. That rough stumble stand of someone who has been very uncomfortable. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of being pulled around on a string. I thought that leaving my home and going on this adventure, I'd find so many wonderful things, and I have, but... I didn't think it would end up like this. Being someone's puppet, it's not ideal. You can leave, Kat. How could I leave? You got a big white home to go back to. And a potential father to go back to, like... If you believe him. He's been dead for how long? Yeah, I guess... Anyway, what about you two? What, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Well, I'm guessing Brick's going to hold me to the dearest word. Mm. 
my duty is to protect his interests. Do you really believe that? Because I've read your emotions and I know there's a heart down there and I just don't think this is you. It is not how about, about how I feel. It is what I must do. But what about how you feel? Screw the rest. Who cares? It is not the way. Can you talk some sense into him? I don't think I can. I think... I think he's got his own mess to figure out. He's a man who doesn't believe in changing one's nature. Not yet. Well... As I can tell, or as far as I can see, we're all friends here, right? We're all in the same predicament together. We've all gotten ourselves into this shit and we need to get out of it. I have an idea. All right, I'll hear it. Well, the King of Flames, he's after people with magic abilities, right? Also, he's proclaimed at least. What if we turn the tables? How you do you mean? Claim that Ainsley has it. Don't say that too loud next to this one. He's going to protect Ainsley's interests above all else. Well, I mean, it depends. Like I said, you have a heart down there. I would not want to do anything that would put Madela's life at risk. And betraying this man could surely end her life. I think there's pieces that need to be moved around on the board first. But I'm not I'm not gonna be the hand that sets the noose around my own mother's neck. But <laughs> we're dead anyway. You just told me we can't trust this guy. What makes you think that No, I said we need to put and push the pieces around the board. We can't act until he hasn't got anything over anyone but us. What are you suggesting? We fix it. We we gotta find Medela. We gotta find your dad. And we gotta find my mom or get her safe. And if we can make sure each one of us has the thing we care about the most safe, well then... I don't know about you guys, but I'm willing to throw my life away to kill that prick. I would not be able to stand idly by if his life was in risk. What if it was Medela? What if it was both? What would you choose? I do not know. Wait a minute. What were the exact terms of your ownership? I know my way around a contract. I must act with his best interest. No, 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 but why him? How did he get ownership? Oh, he made a deal with Madela's mother. For and my what ownership. was the arrangement? Upon Medela's delivery. <coughs> you remember he was given paperwork. Yeah. And the paperwork said that upon Medela's deliver, safe delivery. To, uh, to Ainsley. So it was from the exchange point that Ainsley took Medela um, because I guess clearly Medela's mother trusted Ainsley. So... If Medela never arrived and that deal never happened, then he doesn't own you. Because <clears throat> as of today, Ainsley knows Medela arrived safely. Her mother doesn't. I'm just saying I could void your own contract with a bit of clever work and then you'd know who your owner is and... Oh, 
it'd I'm be not perfect. sure that would work. There was a room full of people at that feast that saw her present. Mm. Well, either way, you've got your mum, and she's, what, a day or two before she's out of reach? Mm. What's your job, anyway? She is a politician. I can't remember the exact She'll be like a, a, um, a military consultant yeah. position. And so it'll be to do with a lot of liaison work. Mm. Has she got much sway? Uh, yeah, she does. Could be a strong ally to have if you're willing to give her a good old hug and a kiss. My mum would do anything for me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of works a bit differently where I'm from, but uh, I can play nice. And I can play nice too if that's what it takes to make your mum play nice. Mm, Do I need to put on a little outfit and hold <laughs> the fields for her? Is that what the Thinnissian lady's like? <clears throat> You're funny. I know. <laughs> well, do you like the sound of my plan or does it sound absolutely crazy? I think we can't, we can't really act against him at all. And we certainly aren't going to do it while the hammer's going to fall on the people we care about if we do. Mm. If he catches a sniff of us doing the wrong thing, you know what's going to happen. Mm. I think the first step is your dad. I know where he is. What? You were sleeping last night. I... I didn't think it bared waking you after last night, but Pemble, my old friend, and Edgar's servant. You remember him? We met him. Yeah, I recall. Back in Felton. Mm. Well, he, uh, Edgar had caught wind of it. See, Edgar worked for the dealer. I, I, I don't understand. That's the thing I don't understand is why this all happened. I... I don't know why he killed him. I, I don't get it. But maybe that's why. It, Pemble told me Edgar had found information that well, where your dad was. Do you have this information? Yes. Can I see it? We'll talk about it on the road to your mom's. And then I glance around a bit and I'm like, we've already said <coughs> probably way too much. Thank you for telling me. Well, it seems to me like he's the loosest thread. If the information's already got out, and he's connected to other powerful people. Oh, you're telling me. Think about it. The dealer, well, it wouldn't be us acting against him. We well, wouldn't be doing anything. As far, in fact, I don't think we should do anything at all. I think we should just go and have a lovely trip to meet your mom. Okay. Do we know that Mandela is safe? Or you away? have no idea. No idea. You have zero idea. What about Mandela? <coughs> what about her? Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but leaving that mansion last night, I was in no condition to help anyone. So. So. I'm worried. I'm surprised he's not worried. I think he's worried. I think he's worried. What can we do? Don't you have... Isn't there a guy, isn't it? Mi My Mickey? Mikey? Uh, you, Michael? You mean the street urchin yeah, we picked up? Yeah, that guy. Oh, you want to get another kid killed in the line of some... Mm. He doesn't have to get close, but if he can do a little... No. Just a little... No. No? No. He's coming with us, and then he's getting the fuck out of here. Oh. He's already probably... Look, this guy's willing to kill a kid just to get to Brick, a man he already owns. So what do you think he'll do to some street urchin just to piss us off or hurt us? Or... All right. I hear you. But I'm driving. Oh, all right. You can drive. We'll get ready and start heading out all for the right. day. All right. 
Um, this inn is not full of early risers. <laughs> it is dead quiet. In fact, they, I think, come to expect this to the point where there's really no one tending the, the you know, admin or anything like that. It's just empty. Um Everyone's hung over and sleeping, it seems. But you can hear the distance sort of rabble outside of the crowd uh, getting started for the day. Many sort of streets across that you're sort of in a fairly sunken district. So, yeah, take take me through your plan. Where are you heading out? <clears throat> I'm going to just head back to the rich district to where we left Mikey. Yeah. I, before we, while we're at the tavern, or the inn, sorry, um, I want to ask the innkeeper... Or barmaid, whoever, mm -hmm. um, what the road to uh, Bartel Keep is like. So, like, have any of the towns seen an uptake? Who, who are you asking? Uh, just the barkeep. There's the, no one barkeeping, no so you'd have to head outside. Okay. There's no one in the building. Okay, that's cool. Yep. So, what type of person are you looking for? <clears throat> Can I make a check to see if I know anyone like a trader or a barter person someone I barter with is in the town in in the city in the city um and head I'm gonna to make it I'm gonna roll a dice for you sure um but it's most likely gonna be in the political district sure Got a 14. Yeah, look, I'm going to say because you've been through here a few times, like I sort of mentioned, you never really saw much of the city because you were in a sort of, you know, protected carriage and you sort of got taken straight to the district where you, you know, had your various meetings and dealings or whatever and got sent along your way. But you were of the city, you, you were reasonably familiar with about a block area in the in the um, political district. Great. <clears throat> yeah, cool. I'll head there then if you're happy to go find Mickey, Mike, Michael, I'm Michael. happy to go to Mikey. Maggie. I'm very happy to <laughs> go guy? to the political district. Mikey. 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 I don't know why think. you can't remember it. Mikey. Think if you can't get into your house, you say, where's Mikey? Because Mikey will, well, Mikey will get you in. That was the dumbest. Anyway, that's... Oi, what's Ainsley's I'm going to use that unironically in roleplay one time. Say it again. What's Ainsley's surname? Uh, Ashburn. <coughs> His last name is Ashburn. Ash Ainsley oh, right. Ashburn. Ashburn. I'd like to go to the political district. Oh, as well. Yeah, oh. absolutely. That's where our, our place is, right? That's where the yep. rich, foppish place was. Yeah, oh, it's on, on the way. Oh, right. Well, yeah. I want to go there. And I would like oh, to find okay. a fine, reputable establishment for breakfast pleasantries, breakfast deep meals, and nice high society kind of thing. The mm -hmm. Shining Mare Inn. <laughs> yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's where we were. Food's provided. Right, that's where I'm okay. going. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're heading to the inn for food. Yeah. Okay. No, but not not for. You'll see. What's ha are you going to the political I'm going district to on the way? The inn. I want to go to the a the place inn. where nice rich people are eating breakfast. That would be the place you have that's a where I'm going. Okay. Okay. Cool. So party split. Uh, you guys all head off along your Aww, way. It's so weird about Madeira. Yeah. Who are you going with, Brick? You. Why? Because mm. I was tasked with protecting you. Oh, right. Oh, now you're the fancy one. Now I already see what we got to do then, eh, mm. Cat? Mm. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> He's following me. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Which means you're off to do your own thing. No worries. Mm. I will meet you back here. We'll meet on the east gate. Okay, no worries. Wait, no, come to the tavern and drive this damn carriage out of here. Can't let Mikey take it. Okay. All right, I'll come back. All right. Oh. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I just destiny rolled for basically like what is available to you, what are you looking for, and what is happening in the district, and it turns out whatever it is you want. Heck yeah. Uh, so, no, ta talk me through a little bit about your goals. Okay. Uh, and then I'll shape it around to the... Fucking 20. <laughs> Great. Well, now I'm going to ask for more. Than we'll no, no, I shouldn't have no, bloody given that a bloody way. I'm kidding. Bloody, um, bloody, so yeah. I basically want to know, um, first of all, what the road is like to Bartel Keep um, and kind of mm. just get updated on all the news and the goss um, with Iron Spire as well and how the mm. King of Flames is doing. Um, yeah, just want to know if like towns are still established or if they're kind of seeing some turmoil or mm. they're hunky-dory. Yeah. Um, I want to also know, 
I might, oh, I'll make that separate actually and I'll write something down. I okay. won't do that. Um, I'll just do that for now. You enter the political dis- district. Mm-hmm. Uh, the buildings are a little different. They're much more stone and a bit of marble and they're very regal looking. Um, nowhere near as high as all the towers in the noble district because the purpose of this place is not to see the view of the horse races. It is to mm. run business. Yep. And to you, to a degree, it feels a little bit like coming home. There's a lot of white, which reminds you of White Top, the city of Thanissia. And there are a lot of Thanissians. It's almost like a, you know, a embassy-esque, sure. where it's sort of like a little bit of this um, enclave of a lot of mm. Thanissian business happening because uh, Great Al has very much, especially in a political sense, come to rely on a lot of the help of Thanissia's expertise and their knowledge gathering and their ability to resource manage and people manage. So this is the centre of sort of resource and people managing. Cool. So you make your way to one of the headquarter sort of embassy buildings, basically. It's sort of like a means of direct communication. It's the heart of the the veins of this area where you can basically find what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is a concierge who sort of meets you and says, uh, good morning, uh, how, would it, how is it that I can help you, madam? Hi. Um, uh, my name is Catalina. Um my last name I can't pronounce and I can't remember what it is. Castor <laughs> Castor Stalia, that one. Yeah. Yep. Um, I am venturing out uh, into Bartwell Keep and I'm just wanting to know how the road travels, like how, how it all fares. Oh, that, uh, that is not information I am privy to, but I, I can introduce you to uh, somebody who could give you a little more assistance, if mm. you'd like. Yeah, that would be wonderful. And in fact, uh, the liaison for uh, the military uh, is actually visiting from uh, that region, I believe. Uh, so you should be able to meet them. Great. What is their name? Her name is Isadora. Let me go get her for you. No worries. Thank you. Uh, about 10 minutes pass. Uh, there are, you notice a bit of hustle and bustle. There's lots of sort of peripheral conversations, very animated debates and conversations. You overhear things. So, do you know what? I'm going to roll for that. You overhear quite a few different things. It's clear that the topic of the week is magic and there are philosophical debates on the implications of the uses of magic and of course everyone is talking in favor of the the king of flames uh, plans to bring magic in and use it because you would imagine they need to um do people seem in favor or like in favor because they're in public yeah sure 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 so <laughs> yep yeah uh there are there are grey guards uh, all around this place. Okay. So yep. it's clear that this isn't like some the place secret to... Phoenician joint to like yeah. do whatever. But uh, you rolled a 15. Uh, I'm going to get you to make a check mm-hmm. uh, for your, what's a good uh, Phoenician scholar? What, maybe one of your political checks. To give me your political check. The one you use for reading your letters into nations. Trade bottom? Yeah, do that. Five? Is that a vocation? Yeah. 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 Let's roll for that. Challenge level three. Three. Oh, was that yours? No, that's not mine. Okay. All right. Um, you get the impression that there's a little under the surface communication, but you're not catching it. It's uh, very rapid. And I think the tone of their speaking is also very colloquial. It's very familiar. These people talk to each other every day and they probably develop their own subset means of, you know, a little more quietly sharing their true thoughts. So you don't yeah, really sure. catch anything in particular, except that you n- recognize some intonations that indicate that cool. um you know a bit more time passes and eventually uh, isadora can be seen uh, it's clear who it is because she's a, around a, a significant group of sort of some iron guard and a few other people um mm. a captain that she's just finished a discussion with discussion with and she she seems to have a couple of the Nissian sort of scholar um uh, helpers um yep. i was gonna say handmaiden but no, it would be like hand and men. Hand yeah. men. She has, hand, <laughs> some, has some hand men by her side. Um, she sort of wraps up and heads over, like turns around to one of them who has just been spoken to by the concierge who then says and indicates over to you. Mm-hmm. And she walks up to you, <clears throat> recognising you by your last name mm-hmm. and says, Catalina, you look quite like your mother. Very pleased to meet you. And she holds out her hand. <laughs> Pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Um, uh, I'm, Isadora. I'm going to say given your roles, mm-hmm. you know uh, of this person. Um, okay. They, they are just a liaison 
uh, of the King's Crop Military. This is the district of the sort of northeastern region. So the group of towns and cities that range from on the other side of uh, Geld. Geldabel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Geldabel isn't a part of it. Geld, Geld. But <laughs> guaranteed way to not get pregnant. Yeah. Uh, as you... <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so there's obviously sort of just some communication things happening and some mm-hmm. preparation or planning or meeting, but this is not her district. Okay. Yep. Uh, but it is yep. your mother's district. So that is why you would know. Cool. How, how is it that I can help you today? Um, what brings you to Geldavale? Oh, just... Oh, wait. Yes, I recall. You were assigned to Felton. Yes, yes, I was. In the art trades. Yes. Yes, I was. I'm assuming that hasn't gone very well. No, I uh, (laughs) I made my way out of that before it uh, got too messy. But as you can see, I'm perfectly fine, so... Oh, good. Uh, Have you been reassigned or uh, are you searching for a new... Assignment. Um, I'm actually on the way to Batak Heap. I am to meet with my mother. Indeed. Mm, before she uh, has other duties to attend to. I know she's a busy woman. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I'm gonna roll a destiny. She pauses for a second <clears throat> and sort of leans in, like at this point, not wanting to be overheard, and says, mm. "What other duties have you been told about?" Well, I actually no. 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 <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Um Oh, I just assume, you know. She is busy. Of course. Have you heard something? I mean, to not tell your own daughter. Well, it's not unlike my mother, but still. Yes, I remember more about you by the minute. <laughs> Quite driven by your emotions, I hear. Um, duty comes first, you understand. So if there is an obligation to maintain state secrets, even a daughter would not hear them. Of course, of course. No, I understand that. It is just a passing visit. Very well. Well, uh, roads are safe. I just came from them. Mm. Uh, there's quite a, quite a good patrol. So you can rest assured, uh, were you to visit your mother... <clears throat> things would go well for you. Can I roll... Like, I want to find out... I want to suss her out a bit. Yeah, okay. What do you want to know? I want to know if she's, like, truly loyal to the King of Flames or if she's trying to sort of hint, hint, tell me something. Um, so make a check for the same check, your uh, trade barter check, and this will be to do with your familiarity with uh, the Thanissian way of interacting with... Great in culture and with each other. So, challenge level three. Okay. <clears throat> General knowledge, yeah? No, no, sorry. no. This is your trade barter check. Oh, sorry. sorry. So, sorry, the sorry, same sorry. one that you did before. Okay. Two. Mm, I'm going to destiny it. You're going to destiny uh, it? Yeah, I really want to know. Okay. Destiny point spent. Yes, I'm on one now. Okay. You aren't sure at first, but then as you sort of just take a moment to recall and a few things come back to you, you become pretty confident that most Thanissians are loyal to Thanissia above all. And uh, while this is colloquialized, this is verbalized um, amongst each other, one might expect by the uh, convincingness of it, in day-to-day life in Graydon society that some people might have other loyalties. But you believe, uh, a little deeper down, that people from Thanissia will quite willingly pretend to be loyal to Iron Spire and Great Owl in favour, in order to gain the edge for Thanissia, to gain greater sure. favour for Thanissia. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, yes, I'm just planning to visit my mother. So I just wanted to make sure everything was fine. Uh, tell me, there is a man in town as well who's been uh, making the rounds. Uh, Ainsley, I believe is his name. Oh, have, you, have you heard much about him? Everybody knows of Ainsley. Oh. 
gambling addict and all sorts, but one of the wealthiest men in the city. Oh. What do you know of Ainsley? Not much, actually. That's why I was asking. I've just heard everyone's talking about him, so, you know. More than usual. Hmm. I wonder what for. Yeah, I, I have no idea, but I thought I would just do a little bit of investigating. It's gambling, you say? What's his poison? Well, I believe he's intoxicated by everything humanly possible. At least that is what the rumour mill spins. Hmm, interesting. Well, I should make off. Can't keep Mother waiting, can I? No, you best not. Hmm. She nods. And <laughs> through the course of the conversation, it becomes apparent that she... Maybe met you when you were a lot younger. Maybe you don't remember, but she's reminded that she's not a huge fan of <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm getting that vibe from yeah. her. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. It was a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine, hmm. Catalina. All the best. Thank you. Please pass on my regards to your mother. I shall. She turns back to more important conversations. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing. We head uh, to with Delvin and Brick as you approach the uh, the Golden Mare, mm-hmm. the Shining Mare Inn, uh, which you know everything is bustling at this point. And look, if you're looking for a very uh, handsome breakfast, mm-hmm. you couldn't go to a better place in town. All right, well, let's do it. I head inside. It is bustling, but in a very different way to anywhere else you've experienced um, because it's more just the sounds of clattering of plates and briskly moving waiters and and bartenders. Everything is very efficient and clean and smells amazing. They would like to survey the room for threats. All right, let's make your check for... uh, I guess let's just go your perception check or crowd control I'll let you pick. It's the same. Four. Four. There are no... You see no threats. I'd like to survey the room for a gossipy looking table. (laughs) All right, I'm going to destiny roll for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, (laughs) That was a one. That's my alarm to move the elf on the shelf. I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> I need to remember to do that tonight. <coughs> anyway. <laughs> I just like kids watching this. <laughs> I saw a great. It's not a, Sorry. I saw a great thing. It was like when you, it's like 6 a.m. They're like, he's off. And it's his mum. She goes, ah! and then she just picks Look, up one and throws it. If they get past like the decapitation chapter, I think. Yeah. yeah we're true, safe. True. Yeah. True. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, you enter and the room goes quiet. The clattering and the satisfied Ooh. movements and sounds sort of like hastily quiet and, uh, and a lot of eyes sort of shift in your direction um, and people sort of continue as they were. But uh, I think in particular the fail and call, though last night uh, you weren't getting any particular glares or anything, uh, for some reason this morning... People seem a little concerned about the uh, the. Uh, do you, do you look apparently Barrowin? Yeah, yeah. So the Barrowin and the Phelan call entering the bar. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Garson. Who are you saying that to? Just the wait staff in general. Uh, y- yes, sir. I love that you went French immediately. Yeah, I said I'm Garçon. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm here on the on the paid tab. Of the lovely Ainsley Ashburn, I say loud enough that multiple tables can hear me. Uh, Ainsley, uh, which one? Ainsley Ashburn. No, which which one uh, that he is paid for? Me. Oh, I'm Delvin. We it's, stayed uh, here. Like, we, no, no, I understand. Uh, the, sorry, he, he pays for lots of people's meals. Oh, that's yeah. he's lovely, isn't he? I went to the a... kindest of men. Oh, well, I was just wondering if I could get my friend here and myself a table and oh. we could have some breakfast. No, we do. Uh, yes, here it is. Uh, table for three. Wait, no. He looks down again. There, there was there someone added... tables? There was someone added to the list. So four. Uh, yes, I will go uh, set it about for you. And he goes over and says, oh, no, it's actually already set. Please follow me. Hmm. 
He brings you along and, sit and uh, shows you to a small table mm-hmm. under the stairwell. Y- y- out of sight? Yeah, reasonably. Is there another table that is in the middle of everyone that's got no one sitting on it currently? Oh, Destiny roll that. Yeah, not I don't dead go center. where he leads. I just go sit on that table. I like this one. Uh, so no, this no, is the, Ainsley would insist. That's a table for six, and there was a reservation an hour from now. If you can make sure oh. you're done in before. Oh, absolutely. Pers- oh, you got to have a chat with my friend here. Roll of persuasion. <laughs> can I assist? <laughs> with intimidation? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, go on, yep. So you roll your assist check. This could backfire. It backfired. So you get a negative one. I don't like being intimidated here. But I get three. three. So two. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that's simply... Wait. He got two. So he he succeeds on a tie. I'm afraid... Uh, we we cannot budge. Uh, the, the we cannot risk our our guests. You would understand if your table were reserved and were the only one left here, and somebody had left a mess after eating. Not that I would assume you would do that, but um, oh well, that's fine. This table right here will have us, won't you? And I just turn to the table next to us and I say, "You wouldn't be one to kick away the guests of the esteemed Ainsley uh, in town." We're I'm here on his so many, You're pushing so many uh, random buttons. I like, so many destiny rolls. Okay, there's a couple. It's, it's a t- the same size table that could fit mm-hmm. four, but there's a couple there just having their breakfast that mm-hmm. sort of look up uh, very well off looking and a little perturbed. Uh, roll a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is the table like empty? No, for, no, there's two uh, people on a table for four. Four, six, uh, four successes. Four successes. As it happens, uh, I believe we were uh, had just finished. Uh, oh, no, I thought darling. you might... Have you ever met a Phelan group? No, no, no. I, I'll I, tell I, you yes, all about I, it. I, I, very, no, I well, want you to stay. Uh, we have a lovely seat here. I hope you enjoy it. And I, we do have business to present to, so please enjoy. Oh, okay. Well, I had some oh, spicy stuff to t- share with someone, but if you're not interested in hearing it, well, good, good day. It's fine. Thank you for the they, table. They walk off. Uh, you overhear them <laughs> say, oh, as the... I think they're out of earshot. One of them says, not, to a, not from a barrel. And they walk off. Lovely. All right, waiter. <laughs> um, I'll have three plates of bacon. Uh, it can be done. And uh, you, sir? No, that's for him. Um, and I'll have your finest full breakfast. Very well. It's, uh, he sure. doesn't order for himself. He's property, you see. He doesn't think for himself. Oh, of he course. just does what he's told. Of course not. Right. Um, yes, I'm glad we understand that. I've met uh, two uh, Phelan Cool in my uh, time working here. Oh, did you meet the one that Ainsley's buggering? I I shall go see to your breakfast, sir. No worries, mate. Please. All right. <laughs> Moments later, your breakfast is brought to the table, and it is delectable. Uh, very robust, but not too... Not too much food, but very good food. Like, it's a good plate. Smaller than a, you know, a good inn in an average town. This is a much more refined inn, and it's incredible. Every bite just pops or is juicy or is, just has the perfect balance of flavour, and it's like a symphony in your mouth. And brick, it's really nice bacon. Cool. <laughs> um, and as you're sort of enjoying your meal... Uh, you know, moments later, as is expected, a waiter sort of comes up and says, um, I trust your meal is uh, enjoyable. Is there anything I can help you with? I, uh, we had a table for four booked. Uh, what was that all about? Was that just a bracky or oh, something? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I believe it was for three initially, and you, you showed up with an extra guest last oh, is night. It, is that just something that happens? Like, it's standard to have that booked in with your stay? Oh, uh, well, with the suite you were staying in. Right, okay. Sorry for coming early then. Um, what happened to that little kid? Uh, uh, did you leave him up in the room? Well, uh, yeah, we did, I guess. Ainsley asked me to bring him along. I just felt a bit uncomfortable about the situation, so I left him here. Is he hungry? Probably. Can we send someone to fetch him? I'll see to it, sir. 
All right, thank you. He wanders off. <clears throat> and ten minutes later, uh, this befuddled young lad mm-hmm. <laughs> who's previously sort of oiled down hair and, and, you know, sort of buttoned up and nicely, forcedly nicely dressed <laughs> young lad is now a bit skew if we're in the same clothes. His hair's a bit ruffled in a way that now is sticking in that place because it was it has a product in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, he's sort of like untucked and looks like a bit dishevelled, which is more his normal state of being. And he w- looks around like looking a bit confused and then he spots you both. Mm-hmm. It looks a hu- hugely relieved and mm-hmm. walks past the the um, person giving you know showing him to you and straight up to you and sits down. Says, "You lot disappeared for a long time last night. Well, you never came back. I had the room all to myself. I thought you might like that. Friggin' palace, it is. That's right. Too much for me. No. Well, maybe. That was fun for now. Fun to run around in, at least." Oi, so we found you then. He's looking jealously at your food. Don't suppose I'll... Order whatever you want. It's on Ainsley's tab. You gotta be kidding me. Or whatever you want. He's... Anything you want to try. Even if you get full and you can't finish it, you order it up. 15, 20 minutes later, you were sitting at a table with about 12 plates of food. <laughs> and he got... A bit of each of them in him before he's just sitting back in his chair, just like, oh, my God. Dalvin gets to work. (laughs) (laughs) Don't mind if I do. Roll an endurance (laughs) check. Are you going to to get involved How hard are you pushing this? I'm just going to have... I had a full brekkie, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm actually, I'm not going to overstuff myself. I'm just going to have a little bit of each like you do at the buffet. What do them like you normally eat? Normally, we like to go for uh, salted and dried out meats. High in protein, good for muscle development. Oh, I bet. I get the knife off the table. Is there a knife on the table? Yeah, it's like seven. <laughs> Brick, that's a pancake. Eat it or I'll stab myself in the hand. <laughs> You're blooming insane. Why would you do that? Well, um, because... It'll hurt a lot, and your job is to protect me. So I'm saying I order you to eat that pancake, or I'll hurt myself. Did you stop me from doing it last night? I pour some maple syrup on a pancake in front of him, and then slide the plate towards him. Are you in a destiny roll as to how Rick reacts to this? I'm contemplating it. <laughs> What's, what is on Brick's mind? What's his character? It's like, I protect you from getting hurt. You protected me from myself last night. I, so I did I'm protect you assuming. from yourself, but you made a, a silly mistake that would cause someone else to cause you harm. This is you directly causing yourself harm. Mm. Can I detect that he's contemplating this moment? He's also commanding you. Yeah. Like separate to the self-harm, whatever mechanism <gasps> he's using, he... You are told to follow his orders if it doesn't harm Ainsley. So I, I actually say, I, I, I <laughs> cotton on to that as well. I'm going to realize that and go, oh, perhaps that's the wrong tact. It would be very embarrassing for Ainsley if all the plates we ordered weren't eaten. So you should try this pancake. We're full. <laughs> He's got real awkward real quick. <laughs> Do I have to do an endurance check? Does Brick like pancake? <sighs> if I have to finish all of these plates. For you. The people want to know. No. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be hard for you. I've just eaten bacon. Oh. You're a big boy. I am a big boy. You are used to filling up on grotesque amounts of food for long periods of not having food or marching. That's fair. So I'm not, I'm not going to make you roll an endurance check. Okay. I start slowly eating each of them one by one. And do you like the pancakes? <laughs> Mikey's leaning forward in his seat, <laughs> looking at you both. He's never eaten a pancake before, Mikey. They do not taste of anything. What about, and I pour maple syrup on. 
a little bit more. <laughs> ah, no. It's somewhat similar to Krupiska. <laughs> right. It is a little bit similar to Krupiska. But softer. But I'm gonna get a bit som- <laughs> I'm gonna get a bit somber there because the last time I had it was a was a somewhat positive experience. The last time our group was whole, having fun. So right. I'm gonna be upset now. Try it with some bacon. <laughs> we have finished all the bacon. All right, fine. Uh, I'm just testing the boundaries. I have so many questions. You have no idea. Well, uh, first question is. Um, <clears throat> I lean in very close. Um, how do you feel about uh, nearly definitely doing something that might get you killed? What do I get? Potentially a lot of money. Potentially nothing. It's a gamble. He leans in. You know what I really want? I mean, money. I've seen it come and go, but... um. I want to do stuff you can do. You know, pretend to, you know, be something, get in places I'm not invited. And that, that, that'll set me up. Is that worth getting killed for? I've come close enough, enough times to uh, not be too worried about what you're pitching. All right. Well, you're coming with me then. And when we finish up, um, I spend the breakfast kind of slightly too loudly making a few aspirate uh, just comments, negative comments on Ainsley's character, but not like obviously slanting him, just like making things that seem like weird observations that would make people who over here just kind of like, huh? Like yeah. just little things. And why did he kiss the fish on the lips? Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it just, just like really, but yeah. things that make people cu- slightly uncomfortable, but also things just that like, make you go. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why did he make us all take our our shoes off and put our feet on the table before we started to eat? <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, by the end of your meal, uh, well, actually towards the end of your meal, you were asked if you wanted your vehicle to be brought up. Yes. Uh, yes. So by the time you're finished, it is out there. Your horses, as you come out, have been plaited and groomed and everything. has Even the side of your car has had a little bit of work done to it. It's not what it was, but it's... A damn sight better than when you showed up. It's been polished and waxed and everything. I'd like to walk up to Bacon and put my hand on the horse's face <laughs> and lean in really close and then say, if they put a hand on you, Bacon, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> you're, you're right. And then pat the horse. Eggs? Eggs looks over jealously. I give Eggs a pat. <laughs> You've been behaving yourself? All right. <laughs> The only two fucking people I can trust. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go. I was say about this, this point that Catalina uh, soon after arrives, I'm assuming having walked back from the political district, or did you have some something else you wanted to do? Uh, I have one more thing. Okay. And this is very much a, like, if it succeeds, it succeeds. I don't want to push any further and reveal anything. Yep. Being super sus, I'm trying to say. I want to know if anyone has any information about a child with magical abilities that left I and I. This is the one that Alard was supposed to we were introduced with. Um, yeah. Yeah. And roll a destiny roll. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So I want to play it as super you got like an 18. Yeah. I want to play it as super positive and gossipy. So if I find someone I want to be very much like hey, I heard that this was a thing. How awesome is it? She's going to be, you know, regaled. You know what I mean? Like super positive. How to play this one? Because an 18 is very good, mm. but it's not good enough. I, if I can at least the- find out if she left the city or if she stayed. Even with an 18, don't you, don't, you don't Dang. find out. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wanted it to be cool for you. Okay. It almost gave Can I a whisper of magic people leaving the city. <clears throat> Not necessarily or the demographic. Every, everything you get sort of returns back to the mechanisms that Great Al has established, which is that the only magic people that are heard of mm-hmm. uh, end up 
conscripting to uh, to serve the king. There are a couple of outliers who you hear of who have been sort of shamed and, and are killed and their family sent off. Okay, um, so kind of following that vein then, if I can't get that information, can I find out the mass of people that are being recruited? Like how many people has the King of Flames accrued that have these abilities? Um, I'm going to say it's you gather that it's escalating. Okay. As more people are recruited, you don't get a clear sense of yeah. numbers. Yeah. The only thing you get a sense of is on the outskirts, further out, which would be considered where you were and where you saw the recruiting happening, it's sort of drier. At least people are less willing to come forward. Yep. But uh, closer to the city, there's quite a bit more. And actually in the capital itself, a plethora of uh, people have emerged suddenly as having, you know, yeah, and in the common theme is also they seem to be very menial magical abilities, very minor things, uh, but occasionally there'll be the rumour of some great display mm-hmm. um, and then followed by great rewards from the kingdom yeah. and uh, this sort of obviously further incentivizes people to come forward. Yeah. So that's what you gather, but cool. nothing's very specific, just sort of a feel for the swell that's happening. Cool. All right. And then I'll make my way back. That's, okay. That's all. And as you make your way through the political district and then between the military district and, and then beyond the noble district, you arrive eventually to the shining mare and a, a glistening carriage that has been brought out mm. just as uh, Delvin and Brick and Mikey are sort of wandering around the cart, inspecting it and about to get in. Mm. Gentlemen. Catalina. And Delvin reaches into his pocket, pulls out a folded napkin, one of the expensive napkins that gets washed, not a disposable one, of course. It's a nice napkin that he has just taken, assuming that they wouldn't mm-hmm. have noticed that, mm-hmm. and unfolds it. And there's like a piece of bread with some mushed eggs on it, like squished into it that he's taken off a plate. And he's like, Brecky. It's like all clean, but it's been taken off a plate and put in a napkin. It's in also his still like what you give the dog when no. you get home from the restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I take it and I kind of smile. And Ain't got no thanks. meat on it. Thank you. You are a vegetarian, right? Yeah, that's yeah, correct. I thought so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. thanks. Roll a perception check. As uh, you're heading into the cart, <coughs> challenge level two. Well, I got two. Okay. Me too. Yep, everyone. <gasps> it's it's minor. It's been bugged. There's bugs all over it. <laughs> no. Uh, no that's Catalina fine. does not that's notice. Fine. What's a carriage? I never look at them. <laughs> them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say Catalina's at the back and um, Brick and Delvin are behind Mikey who gets in first. And there's a, there's a significant amount of clattering as he's, he gets into the cart. What the? I open the side of the cart. What's the clattering? Uh, you notice it's his pockets. <laughs> he's, he's making quite a bit of noise, uh, trying not to, but he gets in the cart. <clears throat> um, he sits down quickly. It's just like... He's All right, where are we going? Brick and um, Catalina outside the cart. I think Brick second. was on his way in behind you. Catalina said she's driving. Yes. So you're probably heading up to the top. I have a quick question. Yeah. So with the prophecy, right, and now having known more, am I able to do like a check to see if I can spend like the cart trip, like a couple of hours to remember more. To, yeah, or decipher it a bit more, knowing what I know now. We could try. Delvin, my good friend. Why do you suddenly sound so insincere? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have a bit of work I need to do. Uh, would you mind driving or... I... Mikey? You want Mikey to drive. I what? got it. Don't it, worry. Why don't you take did. us out of the town? And then he'll take over. we got to meet our friend outside of town anyway. Oh, yes, of course. So yes. you take it out there and then you can do the journey in the back or whatever. Wonderful. I might take the reins up there with our friend for a bit. Leave you guys in the back. Sure. I'll get some catching up to do with him anyway. Cool. All right, let's go. Jump on. Mikey's sort of like eyeing out the outside of the window, like super excited to see the world move around it. It's very vibrant. It's more than it's seen so before. So Kat's going to drive the car. Yep. Brick, you inside? Yep. All right, I'm inside. I look at Mikey and I clock the cutlery, I'm assuming, silverware. Yeah, you, it's it's definitely silverware and various things taken from <clears> the room 
whatever could be deemed as valuable that he could take. I'd like to take like a knife, like a silverware knife, like a butter knife out of his pocket or something that I see when he sits and... Oh, oh, gee. <laughs> they, um, I mean, they gave me the clothes, so I guess they were like, uh, trying to prepare me for the road or whatnot. All right. And then I just grab the knife, flick it round, slide it down the wrist of my sleeve so that it like goes into my sleeve. And, um, and then I'm like... Don't take so much that it jangles and don't take so much that they can see it. Fill in your pockets is a great way to get your ear snagged on the way out the door. All right. Uh, any other rules I should know about? Oh, so many. But uh, look, what worked in the barrels when I was a kid might not work out here. I mean, I grew up on rules. You sort of had to make your own to survive. But um, the number seen- one rule... Is don't get caught. Because, well, if you do and you're lucky, you'll get some lashes. If you're unlucky. And where'd you learn to do all that stuff with the, the clothes and that? You like you become someone else. I hardly recognise you. I think that's my own flair. I don't know. I always liked dressing up when I was young. All right. I mean, sneak into my parents' bedroom. I wonder what a Mikey and... flair is, eh? Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. It's not a story for today. Oh, it's all I'm worrying about. Honestly, keeps me up. <laughs> this stuff you're pulling, this group you got, it's invigorating. All I see every day are a bunch of scumbags who look down on me and judge me, and all of a sudden you welcome me in, and uh, you guys are skilled. Oh. And you got stuff and access and I have no idea what the hell I got myself into but I'm into it it comes with some prices alright well I'll just figure out how to pay him because I want to do what you do <laughs> alright alright I'll think about it I've got someone I might like you to meet let's head out of town and out of town, you head. What's this role? Ride pilot. Okay, yes. Ride pilot check. Thank you. I mean, I could just not. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think you bloody well could. I'm going to say challenge level two. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. And you get out to the outer gate. Uh, There's another check, but it's sort of in reverse, uh, except that rather than sort of inspecting and blah, 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 it's just more of like a... Um, census thing. They're just sure. sort of getting names and directions and just sort of uh, also intending to sort of help travellers and inform them if they're struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, hello, uh, yes, uh, where are you, where is your party off to? Says the guard, having just seen off at the group in front of you in a smaller cart. Um, <clears throat> we are making our way to Batal Keep. Batal Keep. Batal Keep, sorry. Very well. All right. And purpose of business in Geldershire? Gelder Vale? Oh, um... <laughs> My name is Catalina. I had some uh, work for my mother I needed to attend to. Catalina. All right. Very well. And uh, how many on board then? Three. Three? Three plus myself, so four. All right. Uh, I see you here. Uh, You're missing someone. Yes. Uh, She was to also be dropped here. This is where she met up with her. Ah, yes. Yes. Sorry, I missed that. That no. Very well. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, safe travels. Yeah, safe travels. Uh, thanks. That just stung. Yeah. Delvin just like looks down at the bottom of the carriage. You're missing someone. Mm-hmm. You're a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this one in there, a bit of salt in the wind. <laughs> Rub it. Turn this car around. <laughs> um. Yeah, where is that one? Says Mikey. Madela, I liked her. She's in a worse place now. What would you go and do that for? Business. Hmm. It's that price you're talking about. What's the cost? People. Sometimes, but not intentionally. We were supposed to deliver her to her family and... Well, the middle man turned out to be a bit of a prick. You just hear, like, the leather of my gloves, like, clench against the shaft of my weapon, creaking a little bit. I must say it's 
It's sad, but it's not unusual. That's one of the advantages to being, well, like you, Mikey. Yeah, yeah, you say that no one cares sometimes, but sometimes these rich people and these uh, royalty or whatever you want to call them, well, they're just puppets and pawns, traded and bartered and twisted and turned at the whim of power brokers. So Medela, well, she's just being used. Let's play a game. If you could invent your own country, way of running things, if you were head honcho, king on top, king of whatever it is you wanted, what would that look like? Me. I wouldn't be sitting on any throne. But I just might like to put the right one there. Someone, I don't know. <laughs> I know someone. Says Mikey, waggling his eyebrows. I flick him in the ear. <laughs> like someone who ain't as much of a dirty background as you. Someone, hey, 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 hey. You someone, said I clean up mighty nice. Someone like Medea. I think I'm making all right, King. You but really like, how, how long do you know that one? She's sweet. She's got potential. A couple of weeks. But, uh... Anyway, uh, it would be, I guess to answer your question, hey, it would be a place where beers flow freely and the food is great and everyone has a good hey, time all the time. Now I'm talking. <laughs> and what about like, you, big lug? As he looks across, like he does, Delvin gives the like, ah, and smiles, and then just like turns and instantly the smile just drops and he just looks out the window like. And you'd successfully directed his attention over to Brick yeah. where he continues to ask the question. How quickly is the carriage moving? It's, uh, it's starting to pick up a bit of a pace. Is it something that Brick could keep up with if he was running next to it? You'd have to make a check, but uh, it will be difficult considering you were walking and not making this pace. So, but you could try. <clears throat> it's not like they're not going to stop if you can't keep yeah. up. No. What about you? What? Uh, I'm just going to ignore him. Hey, you, big one. What's his name again? Brick. Brick. Hey, Brick. I can see why they call him Brick then. Thick as one then, eh? <laughs> Definitely, you know, he grabs your arm. <laughs> it's like, thick as one. <laughs> I'm going to stop the cart. Why? Can you what? Mm -hmm. Can you hear this conversation? No, we're out of town. Stop the cart. Oh, I, I open the little hatch and I go half mile down the road, left side. Aye, aye. And then uh, <laughs> knock back into the cart. I can tell you one thing. In my little fantasy kingdom, folks like him will be able to speak their mind without feeling like, well, they weren't allowed to. You're not allowed to... He's not allowed to speak his mind? Well, not if he's told he can. Oh, yeah, of course, I haven't said he can't, but... Hey, mate. You're in my kingdom now. You see, in my kingdom, if I were in charge, if I were the one on top, no one would be looked down on. Everyone have an equal shot somehow. I don't know. I don't know if it could be done, but I don't think anyone's tried. I've seen a lot of people on the street. Some people deserve it. Some people never get a chance. Some people had a chance and lost it. But um, if we've got the same hearts, in fact, most of them have better hearts than those that have homes. That's why I don't really worry about taking from them because... Uh, if I break their heart a little bit, it doesn't hurt them. And it cheers up some of the people with the gold hearts, you know? Well, they say those people who have the least give the most. Hmm. Huh. That's really, that was really profound. <laughs> so maybe this kingdom should be made up of people like you and people like I used to be. Before, and I like wait, lift, like pull out my expensive clothes, and I'm like, before I found the trappings of a better life. You think you've succumbed to those trappings, and yet you take an urchin on some weird adventure with you to show him the ropes. Something tells me you're inclined to give more than you're admitting. Well, don't go shouting it around. I can't hurry this bloody thing up. Could you, could you? And uh, up ahead on the road, you see. Um, surreptitious uh, there's, there's, you're sort of passing all these 
uh, I wouldn't say farmlands, it's much more, you know, stables and these different racetracks and whatnot. And uh, there's a bustling activity of people carting things back and forth, but there is sort of one person uh, standing behind a pile of bay hales, hay bales, <laughs> bay hales, uh, and um, just glancing on, in the direction enough to catch uh, your eye. Mm-hmm. For some reason, he seems to... Oh, no, he recognises you because he's met you, so, yeah. <coughs> he sort of steps out as the kind of approaches. Asleep. She was asleep. No, 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 in chapter one. Oh, of course, right. You've met. Yeah, you've met Pemble. Yep. Oh, it's Pemble. Oh, yeah, 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 I'll stop the cart as I see him. He's wearing a weird floppy hat and uh, some <laughs> sort of baggy clothes and uh, looking disguised, but yeah. not, not very well. It's just clear that he's out far enough that it doesn't really matter so much. Morning, miss. He says, sort of walking in front of the cart and just like quickly ducks uh, into it. And he, he gets in pretty quickly and quietly <clears throat> takes off the stupid floppy hat. Hi. Thanks for picking me up. Uh, not sure I would have known where to go if I didn't know how to find you, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I lost a friend, but you lost a, a home. Hi, I did. A place to belong. Can we um? Can we move the cart? We're we're gonna move the. Dude, I I, I want to catch up with me, man. Yeah, I, and it's it's fine. It's yeah. Well, thank you kindly. You wanna ride up with me? It's not like I have anything important to do anyway. You wanna read your bloody books? You wanted to do you? that in the carriage? Yeah, I'm I'm just joking. Okay. I say I say this under my breath outside yeah, as no. I drive the cart. Yeah, because I, I understand yeah. that you this is important to you. So I'm like, but you want to be in the car? You asked me to drive the carriage. Don't you say you want to stay in with me? I will, no, we'll no, go no. and sit on the front and drive the oh, carriage. Oh, I thought you were saying back. that you want to stay in there. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. We'll I go drive off the carriage, carriage yeah. then. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you're inside. You're in the interior. And yeah. uh, Delvin and... We'll just reminisce, catch yeah. up, try cool. and break through the, you know, that awkward, like, 10 minutes of discussion of, like, yeah. and you, so... Yeah. Uh, yep. He's just yeah. past the time. But I'm assuming pretty sombre outside and... Oh yeah, he's he looks pretty heartbroken when you step out there, and he's grateful to catch the air. And as the cart gets moving, looks a bit relieved uh, to have something to, to distract him. Uh, meanwhile, you wanted to you wanted to figure some stuff out. Yeah, and so do some exploring. I so take me through what you're wanting, and I'm going to give you what it'll take. So I basically want because I wrote down all of the stuff that I remembered from the prophecy that mm-hmm. was given to me. I basically just want to compare it and read over it again. Now I've got time to actually just sit down and, and think about it a lot more and also um, compare it with the things that I know now. So like the stuff that's happened in I and I with the sparrow mm-hmm. um, and the stuff with Melba and knowing more than I did when I first received that prophecy. Okay. This is a check for Mikey. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Nothing. Um, all right, so your check, so you want to, See, but you basically want to see what connections you can make with the prophecy and how much you can remember. Yes. Let's do those separately. Okay. The connections thing, I I, I don't think there's a lot I can do there because I actually think that's down to players. I think maybe Mm -hmm. over time there might be more I can do, but at this early stage, uh, maybe if you remember more, that could be facilitated. But uh, Okay. Cool. So... Oh, what's a good way to do this? General knowledge. Can I use my magic to affect my own mentality? Emotions. So you can't you, you can't uh, affect your ability to mm. think okay. clearly. You can affect your ability to feel. So you could assist with a uh, with your you you can only assist a uh, Persuasion. You can always ask for help. You can always ask for help. <laughs> Maybe you're outside. I'm a worldly fellow. You, we've got hours. How yeah. many hours oh, is the journey? You've got at least a full day's journey and you won't get all the way to Bartwell Keep. Well, we're only, we have a chat for like 10 minutes and then. Yeah. Sure. I'll open the little flap mm-hmm. in the door and say, um, I've been thinking a lot. About this prophecy, you remember 
me telling you about it? Yes, yes. Mm. So who's in this conversation? I just want to... Pretty yeah. much everyone. Okay. Including Mikey as well. So well, what do we want? Who's driving? Hey, Mikey, we just opened driving. up. They're driving. I'm just... just but everyone's... Slide. Okay. Yeah. Do so we want... open air. Do we, we, I say, do we <laughs> want to give Mikey a run on the horses and we can all hop in the carriage? Oh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, <laughs> he sort of like jumps up and he gets up. And then Pimble can join Don't us. Don't worry, I got this. I'm your man. I'm happy up. for Pimble to join us inside. Unless I say, Pimble, Mikey. So we'll stop the carriage for five seconds. Yeah. I? Yeah. Oh, I'm introducing you too. That's how Pimble, Mikey. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. Right. Now you know each other. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Um, cool. They shake and greet. Um, roll a perception check, everyone. This little shit bed not be robbing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three. Three. It's like hand slides away. I'm going to say four. With his pimble. Don't take his pimble. Challenge of four. Boom. Yeah. Brick. You recognize, it's very subtle, but you recognize a glint of recognition in Pemble's eyes when introduced to Mikey. He's Ooh. seen Mikey before. That's all you recognize. But they introduce very amiably. Um, Pemble's amused by this, you know, the go getter attitude of this kid. Um, and they have a brief chat, and then uh, Mikey is eager to get up and start mm. piloting. Do we want Pemble to right up there with him. It Mike, is up to you. Mikey's ride the pilot check. Fuck. It's only a one. Oh, thank God. It's only, it was two in the, the city. It's road. one out on the straight <laughs> road. Um, I mean, I don't mind Pemble being involved in this conversation. Is, but your, is your friend willing to, is Pemble willing to join us? I'm sure he'll join us. Yeah, that's fine by me. Pemble? Yes, sir. We're talking about magic and prophecy. You want to join in? Nothing I'd like more. And then we all get in the carriage while a child drives us around. Prophecy, you say? Mm, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a doozy. Apparently some old lady fortune teller that wound up dead told you, right? Uh, well, yes, maybe. I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah. So what do you want? <laughs> well... If it is a prophecy, surely I'm missing pieces. This isn't all of it. It was a bad time for me to remember a symphony of words. So I'm missing pieces of it. I need to put it together. It doesn't make any sense. All right. So is this something that could rely on some mental alacrity? Yes. I would like to... Delvin says, is, is this one a thinker? I close my Delvin closes his eyes and focuses and twists his own thoughts into a form with more clarity. I can also repeat it again if you want. So you can make Mm-hmm. A general knowledge check, and you get uh, with Delvin's logic. Um, Do you, I guess, you feel that actually. How, Delvin twists. I'm just. I'm going to say it. Del, I'm, I'm, I think there's a, a an odd sense of clarity as you discuss this as a group, but as Delvin maintains eye contact and sort of talks through this, coaches you through this. Things are coming back to you. Mm-hmm. Like just, just there's a sh- you feel a bit sharper for some reason. Okay. Uh, so you get to make a general knowledge check. Mm-hmm. Challenge level three. Oh, challenge level four, but you get plus one success. Okay. If I am one <laughs> off, oh, do I get advantage? Hmm. Fucking hell, stuff. I'm not going to give advantage, but if I fail by one, I'll use the destiny to make it pass. Yeah. Okay. You're, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, no. 
One, two, three, plus one, four. Okay, so that was a successful roll. Now I'm going to roll a destiny roll to see how much you remember. So oh no. one, one is nothing, but that's as bad as it gets. Yep. So you're going to remember, most likely you're going to remember something. If not, ten. Okay, so out of character, you know what pieces are missing from what you remember as opposed to the actual prophecy. Mm-hmm. I wish I could see them side by side, but what, what's missing? Tell me what's missing. So while we're in the carriage... I will tell you what I remember to everyone as like a bit of a ritual in my head. Mm-hmm. So what Catalina remembers is powers gathering and people who conspire. Shards of sunder breaking bonds of old. Shards you carry that yearn for freedom will also for real? Break. 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 Oh, but with them, something about new age of power. The crown consumed by flames. War blood, moon, bonds bought to balance and the true power of I inspire made free. Okay. All right. So that's what Catalina remembers of the prophecy. The gaps that you feel filling, uh, particularly the opening, especially because you were unprepared at at the moment that you heard the prophecy. Mm -hmm. So as you're sharpening and sort of thinking back and there's sort of an odd sense of clarity as you try and remember, almost the opposite feeling that you had to last night when you felt this real, you know, that uh, you were drugged. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And you recall that after she said on my dying sunset, heed my word, tamer of hearts, that you may lift the souls of the broken. So that's, you're sort of becoming aware that she, this is almost like this prophecy for you to be able to fulfill some sort of purpose, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, That purpose may be that they may rise up against the gathering powers of those that conspire with watchful eyes. So that sort of completes a, a bit. The, the next bit also becomes a little clearer. The shards of sunder stir in their sleep. Something about that seems to ring a little more relevant, like you're feeling the stirring of things all around you. Mm. You know, you're noticing more things arise. And, um, but then of that it says, and shall shatter and awaken as the bonds of old. The shards you carry, the souls that yearn for freedom, shall break also. And then something occurs to you, something that you didn't recall at all. Um, The word sparrow Mm. pops into your head and fits into the context of the next sentence. Something about the the, heart of the sparrow. Okay. That pops into your head in particular because you remember a note Mm. on a hanging corpse in the middle of um, Iron Edge. Yeah. So these threads are just sort of going ding, ding, and sort of connecting in your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have a few pieces to this puzzle. Cool. That sounds like an awful lot of uh, prophecy. Have you seen... Or done any of this magic? I kind of look over to Delvin. What are you, what are you looking at me for? Well. Is it because I just did magic? <laughs> did you? I mean, yes. Oh, Wasn't it so obvious? That's what that was. That's why well, your cluttered <laughs> up brain just started working. I mean, I don't do it on myself, so I suppose it's. That's right. How do you. I mean, how can I <clears throat> do... Is this something people can just pick up? I could I could work it out for you, Pimple. I last saw you a week ago, and now you're an expert on magic. Uh-huh. Last I heard, you thought it was the King of Flames was absolutely crazy, and now you're a scholar. But now I'm a wizard. <laughs> it's wonderful. I don't know, mate. It's just a thing, but I'm pretty sure you can take it in items. Power contained in items. I see. That's why this old mate wants us to get him a stick. A powerful stick. A scepter, right? Mm, yes. <clears throat> Otherwise, Dolan's mother and my father, which I'd already thought had perished, will perish. Anyway, to uh, to answer your question, 
I believe so, yes. I do possess that power. And he looks over at Brick. And you? This is the first time hearing of this. From you. What? About magic? From you. Oh, right. Well. Well, if we're all getting on the same page, and I think we're all at least starting on one, which is uh, we want to fucking kill Ainsley. Oh, yes. I should have mentioned that. Um, Pemble's on board with the killing Ainsley. I mean, we're, we're, we're <laughs> killing. I'd like I to kill make a deception check. I'd like to make a deception check against Brick to play this all off as a joke. Okay. Let's see your intention here. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Two. That's challenge level two. Because Brick perception. I'm second. Yeah. Three. Four. He knows I'm... I'm like, Brick is owned by Ainsley and is charged with defending his interests. Therefore, any action we were to take against him might be stopped by present company. Uh, was I informed of this? You are now. This is a very awkward group dynamic. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Fortunately, I have a feeling that he doesn't Delvin's... seem all that caught up about it. No, well, he. I always refer to Wait. Brick as myself. I see myself in you a lot. You were Medalis Protector, is that right? Yeah, it was. And now you're Ainsley's. You want that? My ownership to transfer to Ainsley. <laughs> Have you ever thought about figuring out a way to get your ownership back? Do what you want. It's been known to happen. It all comes down to who your allies are and what their skills are. Have you ever thought of betraying everything you know? Aye. And could you do it? Aye. Against... All that is your life and world. Aye. It's not easy. But at least it led to a life that was right for me. What's the life that's right for you? Is it Ainsley? Because somehow I doubt it. I don't know there's many people who would pick that life. Have you heard what he does with his Phelan call? I don't want to know where that's going. We already covered it at the <laughs> breakfast. It's a weird rumour that's going on. <laughs> yeah, there's this crazy yes. rumour. Anyway, I, again, can answer your question. Yes. <laughs> so you did say yes, but then he, come, he turns back to you. I so know. what can you both do? Like, what, what do you know? Because the more we know about this, it's what Ainsley wants, it's what the king wants. Well, as far as I'm aware... I have the ability to change people's emotions to a degree. I can find out what your intent is. I can change it. That's about it. As far as I'm aware, anyway. That being said, we have also met individuals. Their power could be crazy. Well, if there's anything I know in... All the trades I've seen, knowledge is power. And if it's knowledge of power, then surely that's pretty powerful. So, I who, hear that. who do we know? What can they do? What can you do? And what can we do next? Well, the individual that we met early on our travels, we sent him to the Barrows. Is that correct? Aye. Mm. Aye. He had the ability to heal. It was incredible. He was just a kid. But he was learning. Mm. Make plants bloom and like. I'm sorry. Uh, that's I so desperately wanted to say, no, he was Eden. His dad was learning. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because uh, um, it was learning. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, go on. Uh, All right. So healing kid in mm. uh, Felbrook. Mm. We were chasing a girl in uh, Felt? No. I, Iron Edge. Uh, Iron Edge. 
We were chasing a girl in Iron Edge. Yeah, we do. But she got c- snagged by someone. Don't know who. I believe there was another. Uh, your your old hometown was there not? Oh yeah, someone who could float a fucking rock. Yes. All right. Okay, so we've got a rock. They're a all snaffled up by the king. Well, what could the, what could this uh, this one in uh, Iron Edge do? We don't know. We don't know. Control water. Oh, oh water. yes, yes, yes. Yes. Thanks, Breck. Ah, my You're memory. <laughs> all right. What else? That's all we know so far. You said uh, powerful people. What have you seen that's powerful? Ah, uh, well, Ainsley's got it. Did he use? Do you know that? what? He could control our condition, make us stronger, weirdly. But I got the sense he could make us weaker too. He poisoned us, but he held, like he held the effect. Let me ask you, how long have you both had your abilities? <laughs> like three days. <laughs> I have no idea. At first I just thought Kat was hot. I kept looking at her funny and then I realized it was something else. I could tell she was magic. And I guess that's my magic. Well, hang on then. You, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna give this one to you. You've had that. We did sort of open up with the premise that you've had this ability for a while. Yeah, yeah. So you've had, this actually has been something that's take. You've held something to do with for much longer than this idea of magic has become known. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. So. Pemble says, "You know, um, Ainsley's always had a knack. For some reason." The deals always go in his favor. They always give up what it is that they would otherwise hold on very tightly to. And sometimes, uh, I don't know, some, he's, he's always at it. It's, if that's his thing, if, he, if that's magic, it's, he's had it for much longer than this King of Flames business. He's had a very long and illustrious career. It's dangerous, though. The girl, the woman... Supposedly a prophet back in Felbrook. She got killed for not following the king. I was, well, if she's made a prophecy you're paying creed to, then surely she was magic too, then? I'd say, but... If someone can prophesy, surely that's even more powerful. Well, the King of Flames made pretty short of that, so... Great God. She was mm. killed. This business is messy. People who stoop very low to take that power. But they're also desperate enough to accept whatever hand's being dealt to them. But we all know it's a frame. It's it's a sham. Something tells me we're going to see people stoop much lower in the coming weeks and days. So? So what next? Well... Let's go try and look. I can't really put my plan on the table in present company. I'm going to get you to make a roll, Catalina. Um, Just a destiny roll. It's It's behind your drink. (laughs) That was almost a one. Team, that was almost a one. Something just sort of clicks into your head. Mm Mm-hmm. The shards of Sunder stir in their sleep. With a real sense of confidence, all of a sudden you feel like, okay, these shards that are stirring, this is this is magic that's mm. stirring in its sleep. Magic was asleep. Some people seem to have had it. Maybe it was a, a weaker version, but it's always been there. Mm-hmm. It seems like this waking is accelerating. And that sort of, sense of clarity the idea of shards being associated with magic and shards are normally associated with something you could hold or something with a shape or something like you know so maybe and in fact you got a 19 you it occurs to you to look at your harp would i have any idea what delvin's would be if he has something it depends on what he he knows and what he'll tell you. You know, 
I'm thinking about it more. I pull out my heart and show you guys, which you guys probably have seen in glimpses. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a heart. Hey, can we, uh, I'm really, I'm really worried about the state of this caravan and, 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 and Mikey's driving. Brick, could you go up the front and make sure uh, we don't die in a horrible crash? <laughs> <laughs> rub does the brick sorry brick does the rub side <laughs> very well and as brick like we stop we'll ask him to stop as brick gets up i like catch your arm slightly and look at you and i go i i want to be able to trust you brick i wish i could I think we do great things together. And then I just sit back in the chair. I continue leaving and walking around shaking my head. You shake your head? Just, just like resigned shaking of my head. You get up to the... And as I'm leaving. Okay. Yeah. And you hop up to the head of the carriage and Mikey's yeah. lounging back, sort of rain sort of flopped over his lap, yawning. And uh, it's, you know... If you had have taken a lot longer to get up there, it's probably he probably would have taken a nap, but and the horses might have veered off. So it's probably not probably not the worst idea. To be honest, like, uh, I'm gonna like whack him awake and oh oh uh, 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 you uh, maybe with a bit more strength than I intend to. <laughs> I was just resting my eyes. Uh, I didn't veer off or anything, did I? No. No, it's fine. Don't, what, what's the problem? A good soldier stays alert. That's very funny coming from Brick. Oh, hang on a second. He leans over and is like, that's all, that's all you do, right? You're a soldier. You kill people. Have you, killed, have you killed people? Yes. Have you trained people before? There are others that do that. Want to try? What did you want to learn? I don't know, cool stuff. I mean, you look pretty tough. <laughs> I'd like people to be as worried when they look at me as they are when they look at you. And trust me, they're worried when they look at you. I am quite small among my kind. <laughs> oh, you got moves though, right? I know many fighting stances, yes. So he starts grilling Brick <laughs> at the top of the carriage and he's trying to garner as much about fighting from Brick as possible. He's I love how much keen. that's going to make it really hard for Brick to listen to any conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If at any point he's like, attention strays too far, too far from the road, I'm going to hit him again. No, he's uh, always in to your yeah. conversation. Yeah. All right, yeah. It's, it goes back and forth because he's enamored with, like, he, uh, he's very impressed with you. The first thing you have to learn is focus. <laughs> All right, focus. Got it. Yep, can do. Two hands, ten and two. Don't know why I said that. Just learning my counting at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> ten fingers, two hands. That's what, anyway. <laughs> All right. So we are now inside the cart. Yep. I'll pull out my heart. What did you want to say about your harp? You know why I told him to leave, right? I had a feeling and remember what the third option was. The thing that gives you your power and the thing that gives me mine or something like that. Is that what he said? Well, uh, that's exactly why I am showing this to you guys. No, he said something about some deal. It was both. What the fuck did he want from me? I was kind of pissed off and wasn't paying much attention. I, he just said it was a deal that you had done back, I think, what was the town that we first... Is he blaming me for those fucking paintings you cut up? No, no, no. I, I think he might have been referring to one of the previous deals. Before you met Catalina, there were uh, two that were indirectly associated with the dealer. Right, yes, yes. The one that went south, right? Yeah, well, you wouldn't have known it was him, so you wouldn't have known to cross him. Well, it wasn't my fault. Anyway, it's besides the point. The point is, if Brick knows that that's the item that he wants, well then, look, who might liberate it from you or tell him in the future, should we wish to keep it concealed? This is a deception check from... Uh, Pem Pemble. Pemble. One, two, three, four. You need a roll perception. 
probably probably deception from me too. Oh, nearly. Uh, this was this was Pemble, but you okay. could assist, but this was yeah, Pemble. You could assist. Yeah. Can you turn the air conditioner off? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you lose Springfield. You lose. So I have to get four in order to. Yeah, yeah. You have to get four, and then. I'm gonna use a destiny. <laughs> you just burn it I all up. I need to know. This is true. Okay, it's you use a destiny, so and now you're tied, I'm so you need to re-roll. Huh? No, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a tie. So it's a re-roll. So it wouldn't win you. It would just tie you. I'll take the gamble. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I, oh, I'm, so I'm out of destiny Ooh. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> four. It's another four. Out of destiny. Take your roll. <laughs> when when Catalina wants to know something, she really wants to know. <laughs> challenge level four. Challenge level four. Get her a new pair of One, socks. two. No. She, her eyes far as she really wants to. No. You're you're um. Dang it. And and like, without any suspicion, you're fully convinced that oh, this is a previous job that Delvin did that the dealer was talking yeah. about. Yep. Nothing to do with since you've known him, yep. cool. which would make sense, like perfect sense, yep. especially because he's worked a lot with, you know, Pemble and, and Edgar for a long time. So, yeah. So uh, I believe that this is maybe the source of my abilities. I close my eyes and place my hand on it dramatically, and then go. I got no fucking idea. <laughs> I had a really shit sleep last night and I can't focus. Yeah, me too, to be honest. And I didn't play this morning. So wait, do you have to play it to use the magic? You I have to be using it while you use the magic. No, no. So if I'm correct, I play every morning. Just normal song. You know, a ballad, perhaps. And then, you know, I become very persuasive over emotions. But I didn't play this morning. I was really not in the mood after everything that had happened. My mind couldn't focus. So, if this is true... And let's theoretically say this is the source of my power. Delvin, do you have something similar? No. I guess the prophecy lies then. Hold on a second. Is it the harp or is it something in the harp? Oh, it could be something really ethereal, like love. <laughs> 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 You're funny. I don't. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know many Thanissian women that carry around a harp. Whose was it? It was my father's. This love theory might have something to go, might be onto something with this. I put it back. Oh, I'm sorry. I sometimes don't know when to draw the line between pissing about and being serious. No, it's fine. But I mean it. I genuinely don't have a thing that started my uh, little journey down the magic sense. Or at least you're not aware. So you can do the emotion thing. <laughs> and yes. you can do... I can sense magic. When were you able to start? I look at the front of the carriage. And when I'm sure that Brick and Mike here in the middle of something. Okay. I said focus. <laughs> <laughs> you opened up to me, Catalina, yesterday. And, well, there's something extra. And I take an old ring off my hand and just hold it. Nothing is not remarkable. It's just an old ring. You probably haven't really noticed me with it on. Mm -hmm. Um... And then turn it in my hands and say, ever since the whole magic business started and I became aware of magic, well, I became aware of magic in things as well. And that's why I said I think that I can detect it. 
and now that I can feel it, I can use it, if that makes sense. But I couldn't before. And this ring seems to, well, make you think clearer. Can I try it? Pemble looks super curious. I'm like, I don't mean to impose, but uh, you've both I experienced it before. Just pass him the ring. He takes it. Is that in? Is it? He goes, you just put it on? That's what I did. I didn't put on my finger at first, though. <laughs> What were you thinking? <laughs> you put it on your toe. <laughs> Oi, it's a very small ring. <laughs> he puts the finger on his ring. The bah! It's light. <laughs> he puts the ring on his finger. He goes, how do you use it? I just focus. But that's what I'm saying. Until I had that feeling that I could do it, I couldn't do it. So it's maybe connected. Maybe not everyone can do it. Maybe they can do you you focus think close your eyes and feel the fucking fuzzies i don't know <laughs> maybe if you don't mm. mind it was a destiny roll of two he's trying to focus nothing's nothing happens it's like I, I can't figure it out is there a button or something <laughs> what if i play would that help maybe have you ever played for someone before? No. I blow up my heart. And I kind of turn away from you guys a little bit. It's like I'm sitting at the side of the carriage. And I'm kind of like, yeah. It's a good angle on her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and kind of hide a little bit. Um, and I'm going to attempt to play. What do you play to? I play so many choices. <laughs> I play basically the Sinistian equivalent of like chopsticks. Like I want to play something that I know beat for beat, and I cannot mess this up because this is the first time playing in front of someone. Mm. So I want to make sure I do it right. Okay, except for Medel, you play the Sinistian equivalent of chopsticks, beat for beat, Great. and you do not mess it up. But okay. you get no flow. Yeah. Would you? Because you have not put yourself in the place to, to do that. <coughs> Catalina, might you try and relax a little bit and play something a little more? Um, well, I don't know. It sounds like a grade schooler's song, right? It was very impressive, yeah. but it was just very clinical. Why don't you play the one that they were playing in the tavern back in Felbrook? Hmm. Describe it to me. I'll attempt to describe the one that the Thanissians were playing while I was drinking in Felbrook. Do I remember the, the tune? I'm going to say if you're truthful with yourself, you know that it's not a specific song request that's going to do it. It's your heart. You have okay. to play to what your soul needs. I'm going to take a deep breath and relax a little bit. And then I'm going to reflect on the day that's happened and then the thought that my father could be alive and then the memories of him kind of come washing back like when he first was playing late at night by the fire where he'd do it in secret because he didn't want to wake mum he didn't want to wake me um and that's kind of the memory that I ride yeah. on and so I want to play basically what he would play at night now make a roll Amazing. Three out of three successes. You get swept up. Uh, and though you begin from a place of reservation, as in any situation where you've been aware of anyone listening, you do, there is something about this process that pulls all inhibitions away that you actually can't resist by the time things are flowing. And in a situation like this where actually you're, you're hungry for it, you miss this and then all of a sudden this catharsis of the the memories and the the feelings you've needed to get out and, and sort of stir around uh it just swells out in this organic orchestral bliss 
and the world sinks away from you. And as you return to, you're aware of a stunned silence in, in and outside of the cart. Did Pembroke- that was bloody amazing! <laughs> You hear yeah. outside of the car. Do I get oh. the tingle? Uh. Focus. <laughs> of, of just the sense that some kind I'm of I'm going to say you happened. get a, you definitely get, just a wash. you get a wash. Yeah. You don't get anything specific, but yeah, no, at no, this point you get sort of, when you're aware that magic is happening, you don't have to check for it and you do have that little bit of a, just, yeah. So I would it. know to check where I'm wanting to. In the sense of like hairs raising on the back of yeah. your head, but it just feels more, Specific. Okay. Yeah. God, that was beautiful. Well, that truly was magic in any sense that I know. Well, can your ring work now? Doesn't feel no different. Well, then give it back, you All bloody right. sticky-fingered Fine. bastard. I'll figure it out <laughs> one day. I'll, I'll ask for another turn later. I'll, I'll just find you something Warming better. it up for you. Find you something that feels more pimble. Well. Maybe like a waiter's tray. There is a scepter. Well, I don't know what Ooh. Pemba would do well with a scepter. <laughs> oh, well, if we take out this King of Flames, man, well, you know, ain't nobody as uh, adept at handling a, a big sturdy seat like a throne as I might be. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, uh, God knows I put Edgar on the throne three times a day. <laughs> so... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Catalina had an epiphany. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, you know what? <laughs> what is it? If this theory is true, then wouldn't the King of Flames and wouldn't Ainsley have something? Aye. And that's what we gotta get. But before we can do anything, we got to get our people safe. And then we'll pick him apart. Yeah. You're right. And after we're done, he'll probably need Pemble to put him on the loo three times a day, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's definitely a long road ahead of us, but um, I'm on board for whatever you need me for. Happy to have you. You just tell me where you need me. Come with us as far as... Fort. Bartwall Keep. Bart Bartwall Keep. Come with us as far as Bartwall Keep, and uh, we'll work out what we do once we hear from Kat's mom. If we can get her father safe, I kind of want to make sure my mom's safe. And then we can deal with Medela. Something tells me uh, Ainsley has no fucking idea who he's messing with. <laughs> I smile very, like, definitely at Pimble. I'm like, he has no fucking clue. <laughs> Took the words from my mouth. Meanwhile, at the front of the cart, uh, Mikey is making a great effort to hold on to the reins firmly and focus and is grilling Brick non-stop. So when you cleft a man's head sl- sideways, what's the difference between the, the velocity you need as opposed to if you're hitting right down the middle? If it's like, you know, he's <laughs> like, what's the trajectory? But he knows more words than you would assume a street urchin does for some reason. He's a p- pretty cluey kid you catch on to pretty quick. And he's asking you all these questions. Um, you can take a lot of the effort out of the cut if you keep good maintenance on your weapons. A sharp blade makes life so much easier. So, so good you're giving with your answers. I'm learning so much. And I'm just imagining like the camera panning back from the, <laughs> the cart traveling down the road with a colossal dark grey spire casting the mid-morning's sun across the land. Far off in the distance, kilometres tall, far away enough that it's, it's, it's actually starting to feel pretty close. You can get there in a couple of days. I thought that was the biggest dick in all of Great Ale, but Ainsley's behind us now. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of this chapter Ooh. thank you to our Ooh. dear wait i gotta do the pad patrons thank ba, you ba, ba, ba. to our lovely patrons. we're 37 minutes who are yeah late. we are way over time the patrons are loading oh no it's not working 
Wait. Bring them to me. Where are the refresh cache of cut? It's not. It's further broken. Uh oh, we might have to add it. No, we'll add it manually. Sorry, Wait. guys. Wait. Let me manually add it. Tickle duck. Rainaya. AJ Macy. <laughs> Time blink. Oh, there it is. Oh, 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 why is it so fast? <laughs> I don't know. But that was exhilarating. Oh, Let's do it again. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. again. again. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lengthier one, but I think we started to actually sink our teeth into some oh, stuff. God. It's the first time, like, okay, yeah, Catalina sort of opened the can a little bit by putting things out on the table a couple of sessions ago. But this time it's just like, holy shit, you can talk openly as a party now. Catalina and actually, the holiday. You, you probably have a couple of more competent heads on your, yeah. you know, in the group. Medela was very lovely company, but you know, it's not a lot. She but now we're doing it. We got a little spy exactly. Yeah. yeah. So she still matters. Yeah. It's Medela's future boyfriend. Oh, is it? Probably not. I don't think they'd be compatible. I am used to arranged marriage. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for you will, watching. You will be the officiant. What is it? The your bricks doing the ceremony. <laughs> I'm the officiant. No, oh my god! god. All, I can already see over. the fan art. All right. <laughs> see you guys. Bye, everyone.